Hello, how is it going? It is Faker coming to you once again with another Legends of Rune Terror video. And I've got a deck to share with you guys today. One that I did not personally create, but it's going to be called the Undying Vengeance, a deck created by Rodrigo Rays. I will leave a link to his deck in the description with more information. Now, it's basically a deck that revolves around our champions being Callista and Maokai. Now, from what I take of it, it's pretty much like your standard Callista, you run your Scourge, you kind of get your units killed and you bring back the most valuable stuff and kind of keep bringing back value with Rekindler and a couple of top end cards to deal with certain matchups. But I think it's really cool because we do have Maokai, any deck that has Maokai outside of a pretty typical list, yeah, I find it kind of interesting. And I think the Callista can sometimes bring back your Maokai. I think if it's the unit that's died along a certain way, it'll bring it back. And uh, I guess because we're going to have a fair bit of stuff dying, it's like an alternate win condition in the deck. So I find that pretty interesting. Now, we'll have to see how it performs. I'm going to have a few games today, but uh, I'm feeling pretty excited. I can imagine this deck struggling against aggro, but uh, we do have the options of actually tempoing out the... Maokai to summon a bunch of stuff to clear his board. I think Bilefeast is always a great keep and I'm not sure if I can get away with holding on to the Butcher in hopes that we clearly get the Curse Keeper. But that's like such a powerful play in this matchup that I think it might just be a little bit worth it. Uh, this card's gonna help us out a lot too. If we get an opportunity to play this card, I really want to play on our turn so we can actually utilize the challenges. Uh, so he's got the Jinx version so he's probably running some sort of minions. It's good that we're on odds here. It makes a huge difference for us. Um, what the hell? He has a zero mana card in his hand. Like, what? Why would there other be options for him? Zero mana card. Hmm. I could tank two and set up a really strong board. We have the Curse Keeper. I think I tank two. Because we don't even, it's like, I would use a Vile Feast, but like, we'd only like, we're gonna get back the HP sort of anyway, so. This is clearly the play. It's a strong board too, very strong board, very, very strong board. And we don't really care about the value at all in this matchup. We'll just naturally outvalue him. And we have some burst healing from Scourge as well. So that's going to be really nice for us. Hmm. I wonder if we just open attack here. The thing I like about Toss in this deck too, because he hasn't got heaps of Bludgewater cards, but um, in terms of Toss, like we're not always too concerned about what we're discarding from the other deck. We're not we're not like a super controlly deck, so tossing two just to draw two is pretty relevant. It sucks if we get rid of like Ruination, because we only have single copies of it in like certain matchups or vengeance, but in general, it's fine. I feel like a Vile Feast before I attack actually. Because this is gonna get some pretty annoying trades, I don't want it to happen. Another thing though is that he could have, he could have uh, certain spells actually to counter that play. So that's probably a misplay a little bit. But now I have like a cheap unit that like can be glimpsed, possibly. It's Draven time. Okay, turn this got very easy. Uh, I think we just swing with both, right? And if we're doing that, we swing with all three. Interesting. I think I hold back this for the caretaker actually. I wouldn't be surprised to see him buff the Draven to clear the 4-4. Four -four. Oh, that's more conservative play. Okay. Hmm. Okay, take her and undying is really cool actually. That's a really cool interaction. More stuff to kill your units. I think what we do this turn is probably just use the uh, spiderling to block the Draven. Because the axe is going to be pretty annoying. I'm going to play a bit slow this turn by playing the uh, undying, so. I could have just waited till after the attack step, but. I don't think it makes much of a difference. 
It could affect how he plays his cards. So this is pretty much just a kind of dead play. But for the chance that maybe he passes his turn to make me float mana, I think we play the Undying when we have an action. And we're not really hiding anything. I mean, at, we could have threatened Grasp the Undying, so now he knows that I haven't got Grasp, or I chose not to play it. But that wouldn't have been correct. I would have played Grasp immediately before he had a unit on field. Yeah, so we'll stick to the play where I want to block this like this. And this is fine. If he buffs this to a point where he kills the 4-4, I think that's a victory for us. Hmm. Now, we'll probably actually use the Glimpse, I think, onto the Undying. That's a win for us. That was the one card I was worried about, actually. So if I had Grasp, you would 100% do it first because of that card in particular. Okay, I'm pretty safe just to glimpse this. Now that the uh, Draven's take tanked some damage, and it gives us opportunities to actually hit him with the Caretaker. Uh, there's no one amount of spell that can clear this. So the Glimpse draws me cards no matter what. Warden Spray. Do I need to float mana for any reason? I don't actually think I need to float mana. And this is actually really good. This is actually a better target for the Caretaker. Maybe. Because I wouldn't mind pushing some damage. And if we want to use the Caretaker, we're going to kill the Undying. I guess the Warden Spray kind of refills itself. But it's also a blocker for us. Because we're not going to have any blockers afterwards. So I think the safe play is just to use the Caretaker on the Undying. Like, we're not in a rush. Hmm. It's kind of weird though, because on the open... Caretaker on the open is kind of weird, because he can just like not develop into it. And I think most of the time he won't develop into it, right? I'd be shocked if he develops into it. But maybe he wants to get value from um blood transfusion, but he's already played one copy. The safe play is just to hit the undying. Everyone's a garden. We'll keep this for a blocker. I think blockers are important just for like hitting stupid units. Okay. We'll just do this right. It stops him from transfusioning, sort of. Yeah, so, like, because if he transfusions, then one of these dies, no matter what. There'll be no point for it. The only other option is that if he uses a Mystic Shot against this sapling. Loving this card. Really vibing this card. Let's have a look. Let's have a geese. Every heart is a garden where roots may take hold. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Who's this play? Oh, he's emptying out the hand. Fair enough. Um, we we'll always have a target to hit our caretaker on with the undying, so that's really cool. And this jinx is not going to last for long. There might be a cheesy play he can make against me next turn and push 6 damage by like emptying out his hand and then um Where's just like because I won't be developing anything I have the undying though I don't want to develop this on his turn I think I'd be more willing just to drop scourge as a blocker or negating a block because it pretty much negates like X amount of damage These case, I guess, are going to be like super clutch. Okay. This is actually pretty good for us. It's unlucky for him that he found an expensive card. I think what he wanted to do there was empty out his hand. I guess I'll just burst spell for now. Do I draw? We lose Rekindler Glimpse. I think that's okay. We find Callista. 
That's great. That's really good for us. A, it's a threat that he has to deal with. And like he have to, it's, it puts him in a weird spot where he has to choose like how much he wants to invest into the board control. But Callista's gonna break his back. So we drop Callista now. This game's pretty done. Give them a chance. I do have to pick up the pace a little bit though. But I think next turn, maybe we don't even play the caretaker. Maybe we just play Scourge and hit him in the face. Strange glow. They got past me. Do we want to discard and draw? Float mana. Uh, what's float? Floating mana doesn't really achieve anything for us. Maybe he opens up black spear. So I guess I'll keep the mana. Or I put us on seven, eight, scourge, two. I don't know. It's probably just better to play this honestly. This is another thing, thing to put on the board that can be targeted. Yeah, this is pretty much just Scourge and a GG, I think. Once Callista levels up. He might drop something into it. And then I can actually outplay him. Not entirely. It's kind of weird. I, I should still be a bit concerned. I don't think this game's completely wrapped up. But with X amount of resources, he has to choose to go completely face or not. Okay. He's decided to go face, which means I can possibly uh, push a lot of damage this turn with the caretaker. Plus guarantee hitting that. I can actually probably kill him this turn. If I play caretaker. He can't kill me, and it levels up Callista immediately, which means that when she attacks, she'll pull another unit. Which means he's like really safe to attack this turn. I think this game's over. Which makes me wonder like if I had, should have just gone for this play first before he had the um, priority to actually kill it. The ordering may have mattered a little bit, but I didn't know for sure like what the turn was going to look like. So we should probably attack with this first, but I don't think it really matters. This challenge is this. One, two, three. We have a four, four anyway. Oh, powerful! I almost got scared for a second. I'm like, <laughs> burn decks are pretty crazy now. So we get the nuts in this matchup. I think what mattered the most was the Curse Keeper and the uh, Witcher in the opening. So that was like totally relevant. We, we have no mercy. Doesn't matter what matchup it is. It's really disgusting. <laughs> we didn't even find Malkai in that one game. Like, it's probably good that we didn't find Malkai. But it would have been interesting though to put Malkai down. It's an okay stat line versus aggro decks and they have to like choose to like go for it or not go for it. So Ezreal Vi in Noxus, hey. I wonder what's going on there. Uh, I will assume it's some sort of like just Ezreal. This, oh, this is weird. I haven't seen this these colors before. I don't know what to assume. I don't know if I need to play for value or we'll just kill him. We'll go for the kill him plan. I think anything with Ezreal wants to die faster. How fast do I want to kill him? Do I want to kill him now or soon? Kill him soon. There's no point in swinging. He actually might do a cheesy thing where he blocks my 1-1. One -one. It's not unreal for players to do that. Right. So this probably gets cleared. If this gets cleared, then maybe we should have gone for the Butcher play on 
prior turns to get pressure. This has to get cleared. It's done. Not exactly a clear. Why would you do that there? The buy time, I guess. So we pretty much attack. Ah, oh, Ravenous Flock, of course. I couldn't have done anything about that. Hmm. I can see the Ravenous Flock in the centuries being quite relevant for leveling up Ezreal. This seems like a really cool deck. So is this going to be open? At this point now we're going to have to start beating him down. I think he's had the pretty nuts opener with this, the Sentry plus Ravenous Flock. That was actually quite mental. Anything I can do here? No. This was kind of weird though, hey? The um, both players draw. 2 mana, 3, 2, both players draw a card. Against aggro. I don't know how good that is. I guess I'll play the Warden's Prey. And we'll save Glimpse. Only for denying cards. Unless we top deck something crazy, we're not going to have productive plays to do against him. And he has no mana. But it wouldn't matter. I think we should salvage maybe. Otherwise we're floating too much. Lots of Butcher and a Caretaker. That's kind of okay. We drew pretty poorly. Not sure what I was hoping to find there. Like Chronicle of Rowan would be nice. Okay. We can draw some cards. We probably want to double up now while we have the opportunity to. Maybe we can deal with a bun. Sure. Here's what it is. What's a better blocker? I do like 6 plus cost cards. But this also gives us more options for next turn. And we're probably not going to play a 6 cost card next turn. Like, I can't think of a spell that would really make much of a difference as 6. Corruption maybe. I'll put down the Warden's Prey. This is probably a better target for a Curse Keeper. Not Curse Keeper, sorry. Conquer Ruin. We block this. I take too much chip damage against the Ezreal and Noxus. Giddy. <sighs> okay. So I guess we're just playing some dudes and doing some stuff. Probably Curse Keeper and Caretaker. We have to apply some pressure. I wouldn't be surprised to see him just like ping this. Because he'd be worried about, like, I'm not, I don't think you're ever in a position where, like, it's a correct play, but sometimes you, like, I don't know, because you can consider doing something about this Curse Keeper to deny value. Pretty crazy swing. We have no mana to do anything now, though. Play the Yeti. Look for the 5-5. Five five. Maybe that's fine. Oh, he's got Mushroom Clouds. And hand one, two, three, four, five, six. These cards have been hanging out for a while. So I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I develop one of the one ones here. So every point of damage is going to count. We have to kill him fast. Fight comes down on curve. Mm. This deck's really cool. I like the idea of it. So we pretty much want to block like that.
I uh, probably should have put down a Yeti. I kind of like um, autopiloted that turn, but uh, Yeti would have been 100% better here. Because drawing into a 5-5 five five is probably a lot stronger than most of the cards we'll find in our deck. Oh, Blade's Edge. I guess Vi is like another finisher in this list. The idea of this deck just seems so right. But we'll see. I mean, we could just find Rural Nation. Maokai. Doesn't really help us. But we'll play him. This thing has Challenger though. God damn, that's annoying. Actually, I have Vengeance. That's actually really relevant here. Now that he's open attacked. He might have had another Vi in hand, so we would have had to wait till he attacked anyway. There's actually no way for him to deny vengeance. So that's like the one downside to this kind of list, I guess. Jump. We need to hold mana for vengeance. I don't want this dealing 5 damage to me. So block. Oops. I think we have two copies of Maokai in the deck too, so we should probably play this. Plunder, place a follower, place a follower in play into your hand. Uh, I'm not sure how helpful that is. Pretty sure the Maokai goes down if I play him. Like what would be the answers though? It'd be like double Mystic Shot. But nothing else really makes as much sense. So we're gonna give it a go. We can play the Scourge and the uh, Yearling to get some minions. It most likely dies though. I mean, this is not a list where you can, you can probably still OTK me. I'd hate to see like Nox and Guillotine. I think that'd be like a really big bummer as a card to see right now, which is what I'm fearing it might be. Because if you're, running, if you're running these colors, that makes a lot of sense. At least I can get some value from the Maokai. Probably play the Yearling. Lost Ruination. I think that matters right now. This is pretty useful. At least a follower in play into your hand if we plundered. <laughs> We're not going to find much value from this. I can't see it being useful. Uh, Nox and Guillotine. I feel like Nox and Guillotine is coming. Yeah, dude. That's actually insane. Can I do anything to outplay this? Not really. It just doubles up on it. And it's also doubling up on the Ez too. That's really crazy. I can play one more, actually. Toss card if I want to win that way. I just don't get any value from the Bile Feast. I guess I'll do it. It's another 2-1. Another little bit of chip damage. Oh, it's the first turn though. Actually, this is a mistake. It's only the first turn. I'm not used to playing Maokai this way. It's only the first time we played each round. Um, so that's probably a misplay, but we are pushing one extra damage. Oh, we would have been better off floating their mana. We definitely do this. So we'll always hold the grass back for the Ezreal if it comes down. And the Vile Feast. We want to keep a copy of both of these. I wouldn't be surprised to see it come down prematurely. Progress day. Okay. Let's see if we can do something with the plunder maybe. We'll try and do something with this because we're running out of minions to play. And the Scourge I want to wait till Maybe we can kind of like not die in one turn and then play Scourge and heal a bit. But he's got some pretty nutty refills, so it's gonna make things kind of awkward. So I guess we end the round here. We don't really want to play anything without a reason. Gotcha. Guess he did. So I guess we play Undying. 
As if it's already leveled up, there's no stopping that. Plunder. What interesting cards could he possibly play that I could steal? And I wonder how many copies of Vi they run. Probably three and three. Ladies and gentlemen, both players draw one. Okay. So I've got ten. If I chronicle ruin, I cannot. I could do something crazy where, like, I mill him. How many cars is this city on? One, two, three, four, five. He's on 10 cards. I could literally mill him. Is that something crazy we want to do? Nah, it doesn't, never usually works, right? I guess we do this. That, this is, that's too much of a Mimi play. I don't want to do that. I actually want to win. So, I don't think that's going to be the best play. Especially since he can just burst spell out anyway. So if I steal this, he'll probably be like, oh, think, oh, he's going to try and mill me. I'll actually just play my cards, but it also kind of stops him from holding back resources. I, c I can still do it, I just can't play it this turn, so... When I invested into the Clonker of Ruin, that play went out the window. We are on a clock. There's no way I play Scourge now, is there, and try and push a lethal damage. Five plus two, seven, eight, nine, ten. It'd only be ten damage, so it wouldn't work anyway. It's Ezreal. I'm so good, I surprised myself. It's kind of annoying because I can't do my vile feast plus grasps, which I think you may have considered. Hmm. He's gonna get a bit of value from that. But like, it probably wouldn't have really mattered anyway because that's the thing about Ezreal. It just doesn't allow me to um, interact with it. And because of it's like fast pace, it doesn't matter because I have to respond to it first and then it just doesn't really matter. We well, yeah, eventually kill it and maybe stop some sort of slow spell, but right now is where it really matters. He's going to spam me. So I guess I'll grasp it now. Maybe Val Feast. No, I'll grasp now. There's no reason not to. You can't counter it. You can send more damage to my face. It's whatever. Mm. I should have held mana for a uh, grass plus file beast, expecting it to come down. But he probably wouldn't have played it if I had a held back mana. So I don't know. I don't think it really mattered. I think we just gave this deck too much time, and now we're about to lose. We see how much we can heal, how much you can do in one turn. It's getting rid of Thunamic Beam. Plus static. Mm. If you're sitting on a progress day, that's going to be a bummer because maybe he runs out of resources. These mushrooms could possibly kill me. I don't think Maokai is going to be a win condition. So we just open attacks, right? So 
2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. You've got 12 points of damage, and that's not including any spells that you might have. So if they're all just cheap spells, we should be dead here. Most of the time we're dead. He might be sitting on a Vi. That does kind of make a bit of a difference. At least it hasn't got, um... Oh, it's about to get, it's about to get buffed, actually. Hmm. Guess I have to try and kill Ezreal. Maybe he's, he's sitting on a double Vi, double Ezreal hand. That's about all I can hope for. And the ordering doesn't matter, because I have to ping it. This is a very toxic card. Two, four, six, eight, nine, eleven, plus five. Is there any way I can actually survive at three? No. Oh, I know it hasn't leveled up yet. This is actually not dealing excess damage. We are still alive. We are still alive. We are still alive. And I can actually deny this. Now the Vi hasn't struck. And the fact that he didn't kill me with whatever cards he has in his hand means that maybe he doesn't have the direct burn right now. There's a chance. There's a chance we win this. What do I kill? I probably kill the 1-1 one, one here. I need this to stick. He would've killed me if he had the- <sighs> Yeah! That's a bummer. You can plunder it. And it sucks that our board's full. Because I think... Because mm. we could have actually played the Chronicler, but it would not come to the field. The fact that our board's full is actually crushing us right now. We can plunder. There's the one two punch. We can bring back the Scourge. That may be the play, actually. It's gonna be the most logical play. Because he hasn't had the direct burn off the top. And the Vi hasn't leveled yet. Oh, now it has. Shit. Maybe we weren't supposed to swing there. So he probably kills us in the open. Put a follow into play. I didn't even think about the other the fact that he can do it on the other way. Okay, is there anything that can get us out off the top? I think we discarded all our answers. <sighs> what a sad game. That stun card was very detrimental. I thought you'd never ask. Um, was there any way we could have punished this Ezreal coming down? Oh my god. There was. I actually considered taking back this century. But that still wouldn't have saved us. We would have just stunned the Ezreal and then the Vi would have attacked. This has Challenger, so it's pretty much over. It was already over. Dude, what a game though. I think if things just went a little bit differently, we might have had a fucking shot here. We might, we really had a shot. I think probably like some earlier turns would have made much of a difference. Disappointing. I think we shouldn't have striked that turn either. I think as soon as the Scourge got stunned, we should have considered the Vi leveling up. 
But then you top deck the Ezreal anyway. And then I kind of like, I don't know. Like, maybe we're supposed to attack and hope for something off the top. Disappointing. Disappointing. I guess we should have one more game. To at least see if we can go like, 2 and one This twist of fate. Facing so many different decks. This is insane. And like, I don't know what to play around to, which makes it a bit of a problem. The fact that like, we're thinking about all these cards, which some of them might not be run. It's the beauty of the early days in the meta. Like I haven't dived deep enough, di dived deep enough into some of the decks around to really understand what's happening. I just pretty much stick to my own game plan. It's like usually semi kind of ignore what they're doing. I mean, I guess I swing. There's only zero amount of spells. It's dynamic beam, but that's a slow spell. So I'm pretty excited to see what this deck is. Fizz. I thought about fist decks. I had a quick, quick think. Couldn't think of anything too specific. There's like Piltover Fizz could be a thing. There's also Fajord Fizz. But I think Fajord like only has a couple of decent cheap spells. So probably pair Fizz up with Piltover. And TF probably makes a lot of sense. With the Curse Keeper, a Ravenous Butcher combo. I feel like this guy won't handle the pressure. He wants to do like weird Combinations of cards. This thing's just gonna go elusive for me. I probably wanna like kill him fast. There's no point of grasping it. He's most likely always gonna have an answer to protect it. I mean, sure. So we get here. That is a good one. This is a good one to find off the uh, Warden's Prey. Yeah, I know. You're gonna start hitting me with fucking your fish. Press R. I wonder if he has an answer to Callista's though. His deck might be kind of greedy. I got the kids. That's kind of an answer. Am I supposed to just swing here with the Callisto as well? It cannot, that can't be correct. I think if anything, like it forces him to find answers for it and I can just let it sit back and eventually it is by get, it might level up. We want it to level up for sure. Okay. Holding back to Callista also just threatens to him to like kind of like always not be able to block. Sorry, that's not the right word. It puts them in a position where they have to really consider about if they want to block or not. So I'll take that. Okay, so what's he looking for to deal with it? He's looking for like like a TF maybe to do some damage plus a Mystic Shot. I can outplay TF's red cards if I put down Curse Keepers. He maybe passed- why did he pass the turn there? He wants to see me drop below a certain amount of mana so he can play a card that I can't outplay. There's nothing to- for me to outplay. Okay, so he has a gotcha. That works perfectly. But I have Curse Keepers. What does he want from me? Running Fizz though, when I think about it, it always forces them to hold mana back. Because you always have to have an answer for your Fizz. Uh, value block. Is this correct? I mean, probably. Just borrow in here. I 
This is crazy. We're finding just the right cards that we need. I wonder if the Maokai is even like, you know, the plays. Because we seem to be just hoping to find anything but Maokai, it feels. So we're definitely just going in. And this is probably the problem with Fizz as well. That it just kind of gets rolled over. That's a TF. That's the red card. Which kind of like works out decently for me. Something for all of you. Sure. <laughs> you can't swing with the TF now. Any? So always block it. He swings with the fit the fish. Oh, it's our turn. What am I talking about? Okay, let's go in. I don't see any reason not to. If he's blocking like this, he clearly doesn't have a good hand. Like another TF maybe. Does he need to block like fish? TF. I don't know. Fish, running out of value. I think if you're running Fizz, you need some serious cycle cards. I'm talking every cheap draw card in the game. I got ways to find me mushrooms. That's kind of cool. I guess I'll grasp it. Like... What you need is to buff the fish. There's that Piltover, is it a Piltover card or Blige Water? No, it's a Piltover card. There is a card that when drawn is two mana less. So it's a two mana and it sets the attack and HP of a minion to uh, four, which I think is like pretty much what you need for fish. I wonder if I attempt to actually try and kill the fish now. Probably not. Pilford goods. I mean, the fish, the fish can die. I can kill the fish. Is there a zero mana card I don't know about? Dynamic beams zero mana card. The fish is dead. <laughs> the fish is dead, ladies and gentlemen. We we got the fish. Um, I'm going to assume that my opponent did draw pretty poorly, but, uh, yeah, our deck pretty much features Maokai, we didn't see Maokai much, but in the end it was pretty much just a clean Callista game. Uh, there was that, there was that, um, there was that, uh, game where we, I forgot what it was already, the one that we lost and we ha did have Maokai. Oh yeah, the Ezreal, and they cleared the Maokai. That game was kind of close, and I feel like Maokai might have been relevant in that matchup. But I think we just have to play a few turns differently. I think drawing Maokai earlier does make a difference too, against those decks. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, maybe we will revisit a deck like this in the future. I didn't get much of a chance to showcase Maokai, so maybe we shouldn't like mislead the community too much with the video I make. So we'll just call this a Callista deck. Callista Maokai deck. We're going to call it Undying Vengeance, but 
We will shout out the player once again. Uh, his name is. I cannot see it. Hello? Collection. Uh, Rodrigo Race. Interesting deck. Uh, we didn't get to see Maokai much, but uh, Kalis is still just a strong card. Maybe there's another deck that we can try and twist in, or some cards can be changed. Anyway, I'm rambling, I'm rambling on too much. Uh, leave a like if you can. Thank you. Bye bye.